Here we're back in Leading Edge. This is DJ Swearingen, uh, Republican, 89th Ohio House District, Erie, Ottawa Counties. Sports gambling is an issue in the state capital. It's now legal, or it's legal nationally if you guys want to do it in the state, right? It's constitutional. It seems inevitable, but there's disagreement now over who should govern the gambling, the Ohio Lottery Commission or the Casino Control Commission. Why does that matter? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into the whys and wherefores. I'm going to leave that to our finance you support committee. support sports gaming? <laughs> I, I do. I, right. I think, um, you know, where, where we're at right now is it happens, and, um, you know, if we can regulate it and control it and make a little bit of money off of it, then uh, all the better. Uh, in the wake of the Dayton mass killings, Governor DeWine called for some gun control reforms, expanded background checks, closing the gun show loophole, red flag laws, when you know someone who has a gun who really shouldn't. What, DJ Swearingen, if any, gun control reforms do you favor? Uh, right now, I, I, I support my bill and Representative Plumber's bill, which um, aligns state law weapons disabilities with federal law weapons disabilities. You know, my own sheriff in Erie County said that uh, the gun violence he sees is the day-to-day -day gun violence where you have an individual, um, let's say, who has a um, misdemeanor conviction for domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. Under the federal weapons disabilities, that is a weapons, weapons disability disqualifying you from owning a gun. Okay. In Ohio, it's silent on that. So what we're doing is lining up the Ohio law with the federal law to say, well, if, if it's a federal weapons disability, it's also an Ohio weapons disability. The impact of that is it allows local law enforcement and prosecutors to now enforce those weapons disabilities, whereas before they couldn't because they were federal law violations and not state law. Um, closing the gun show loophole. Yeah, I, you know, that's something we can look at in the legislature. It's not, it's not in my bill. I understand. Um, you think you know, it's, it, it's something it pass that, that legislature? I don't see it passing that legislature. Uh, you know, it, it could depend on the upcoming election. It could depend on uh, what leadership favors and doesn't mm -hmm. favor. So a lot of legislature, as you know, passed the heartbeat bill some time ago. It's now in the courts, as everybody knew it was going to be. It's part of the strategy. We've also learned of new proposed legislation that says anyone who gets or performs an abortion could face murder charges. You're a good Catholic boy, I read, active in your church in Sandusky, right? That's right. All right. St. Mary's. You, you support this murder charge approach? Well, you know, I think being pro-life, uh, I support life in the womb. And, you know, we believe that those babies can't speak for themselves, so they need for someone to speak for them. Mm. Um, I think that bill has some issues that it needs to be cleaned up and clarified before we consider passing anything in the law in it. So, um, I don't know whether you have, do you have any wind farms in your district? Uh, we have one that's trying to be built uh, in Southern Erie County. My hometown, Bowling Green, as you know, you've all seen the windmills down there for years. Now comes a bill that says the placement of any wind farms in Ohio is subject to a vote of local residents. DJ, doesn't that both jeopardize the wind industry an environmentally friendly, renewable energy source with no carbon footprint, but also greatly restrict land ownership rights as we've known them for years. And you're a real estate lawyer. You know That's about right. those rights. Yeah. Is, doesn't this proposal do both of those things? Well, I would say when it comes to an issue like this, when you look at wind farms, yeah. to make them efficient, you need miles and miles of windmills. So unlike other issues that are specific to a landowner, like if you want to build a new shed, put a new roof on your house, a wind farm really impacts the greater community. So our argument is if the power siting board says we're going to site this area as a wind farm. They're the people who have the say right now on where it goes. Go correct. Ahead. The, the local community can then find enough uh, pe uh, signatures to petition the electorate to put on a ballot and put it to a vote. Or they can say we're going to accept this. And there's some areas in the state of Ohio that would absolutely accept wind. So I think the wind farm we'll be able to find some takers. Some will say no and some will say yes, but ultimately it's the community's decision. That's time. Uh, this is State Representative DJ, DJ Swearingen, 89th Ohio House District, lives over here on Way. Erie he represents Erie and Ottawa counties. Thanks. We didn't get to all of it, but <laughs> hey, you've, just start, there. you've just started down there too, so you can come back, all That's right? That's right, I will. Uh, it's good to meet you. Good to meet you too, Jerry. Uh, uh, out of Bowling Green State University, did I mention that? And the University of Dayton College of Law. All right, when we come back, we're on the move to 2045? What roads will lead us there and how you can help decide this is Leading Edge.